Harry's wife. Harry is thrown under the bus. The narcissist has a fuel matrix. The people that go in the fuel matrix have a hierarchy. Tertiary, secondary, and primary. There can only ever be one primary. There can be a former primary source, but there's only ever one current primary. Usually an intimate partner primary source, sometimes non-intimate. The individuals within the fuel matrix, unsurprisingly, are there to provide the narcissist with fuel, and their ranking in the fuel matrix affects the potency of the fuel that the narcissist receives. If you'd like to understand more about this, then you really ought to read my excellent book, Fuel. But those members of the fuel matrix also have other roles in terms of the ability to control them, the extent to which they provide character traits and residual benefits. And in essence, the person that is the easiest to control, that fountains with fuel, has copious amounts of character traits and residual benefits, invariably finds themselves as the primary source. It might be the case that somebody has lots of fuel, character traits and residual benefits, but they're difficult to control. Therefore, they won't be the primary source. They might stay instead as a secondary source. It could be that somebody's really easy to control, but they don't provide a lot of fuel. Again, they're not going to be the primary source. Accordingly, Harry is the primary source to Harry's wife. Easy to control, lots of fuel, plenty of character traits, and substantial residual benefits, at least at the beginning. Those are now waning. But there is also another benefit that comes with the intimate partner primary source. And that is their use for throwing under the bus. Now, any appliance can be thrown under the bus. Tertiary, secondary, both intimate and non-intimate. Basically, the narcissist puts that person in an invidious position for the purposes of the narcissist's gain. But it is the primary source that finds themselves thrown under the bus repeatedly and regularly. Because, as part of the fact that they are the easiest to control, they will often get thrown under the bus, not resist being thrown under the bus, allow the bus to drive over them, and then pick themselves up again and be ready and new for the next bus to be thrown under. Why does the narcissist do this? Well, first of all, with regard to the intimate partner primary source, the narcissist simply doesn't care about them, in the way that the narcissist doesn't actually care about anybody. The narcissist may make a pretense of caring, of course, in order to draw that person in and manage a facade, but it's not genuine. The ability of the narcissist, as a consequence of the absence of emotional empathy, no sense of accountability, no conscience, no sense of remorse, means that any individual can be used for the state of the narcissist's needs. But the primary source is utilised more often, not only because of their capability to the prime aims, but because of the capacity that they have, by virtue of their conditioning, to allow themselves to take the heat on the part of the narcissist. Remember, it is never the narcissist's fault, for the admission of fault affects the concept of control. The narcissist must always have control, and if the narcissist is to say, with genuine admittance, that they were at fault, they relinquish control, and thus the narcissist will start to cease to exist in the form that is required. Therefore, the capacity to blame shift, to tell you that it's somebody else who is at fault, who is to blame, who has cocked up, who has fucked up, is very much required from the narcissist. And who better than somebody who will reliably allow themselves to be thrown under the bus again and again and again? Some appliances are thrown under the bus and then consider themselves badly treated and think, I'm not being treated like that ever again. Call themselves a friend? No, I'm out of here. 
And they escape the narcissist, thus preventing the narcissist from accessing them to throw under the bus in the future. Tertiary sources, having no sense of loyalty towards the narcissist, will easily ensure that they keep a distance. And some secondary sources, notwithstanding the fact that they've been drawn closer to the narcissist, often look and think, I'm not being treated like that. I'm not being treated as a scapegoat or thrown under the bus. And therefore, they retreat and escape the narcissist. The narcissist might try and hoover them back in with varying degrees of success, but it is the intimate partner primary source that is far more likely to allow themselves to be thrown under the bus again and again and again, because invariably that empathic individual suffers from the addiction to the narcissist and their judgment is clouded by their own emotional thinking. They have been tenderized by the manipulations of the narcissist over and over and over, so that the narcissist is able to throw them under the bus, allow them to take the flak, then offer some form of false contrition, a promised gain, I won't ever do it again, only for them to go and do it again, because the narcissist must always have that control by not being accountable. This is the fate that Harry has. We have seen this recently. When all of the shit started to flow in relation to the publication of Spare, Harry's wife wasn't there. She was not supporting him in his promotional activity. She gave no interviews in support of him. She said nothing about it. She hung him out to dry, as I've explained in parts past him, and threw him under the bus. In relation to instances where things have gone wrong, she will blame him. It was Harry's fault. I told him, revision of history of course, but I told him that this was a bad idea. I cautioned him against being so candid. I said that he should reserve things. I told him he shouldn't have said those things about Camilla. Thus, by blaming Harry and throwing him under the bus, it allows Harry's wife to deflect any threat to control that's aimed at her, and where those that gain agreement that Harry is in the wrong, it gives her an indirect sense of control over him also. She doesn't care about Harry. His needs and desires and wishes are utterly irrelevant in the universe of Harry's wife. He is like a test like a crash test dummy. He is there to be put in the front of the car and driven into the bus, examined and then done again and again, so that she doesn't have to come to harm. He always will. We will see him get thrown under the bus more and more. Harry's drug taking caused the split. I tried to help him, but he wouldn't listen. Harry's temper. He entered into these rages where I feared for myself and the children. It was him that destroyed this relationship, not me. Harry was the one that stopped me doing the promotional work to try and earn more money for our household. He was the one that wouldn't allow me to be me. He changed. He, all he was interested in was smoking drugs and staying around the house. I felt like a prisoner in my own home. It was Harry's fault. If Harry had done more in relation to Spotify, then the contract would not have been lost. But he just wasn't interested in supporting me in my endeavours. He was too interested playing the Xbox, playing polo, smoking ganja. Harry is disposable. His golden period ended a long time ago. And as part of the sustained evaluation that he finds himself in... Part of that role is to be thrown under the bus repeatedly. It has happened before, it is happening now, and it will keep on happening. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.